Greetings, everybody. I told you I would be reviewing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, and that's what we're going to discuss right now. No fancy intro, no nothing. We're just going to get straight on to it. So, as you saw in my latest video, that I uh, went and saw it at the drive-in. Yeah, it's something a little bit different. Uh, you know, I love drive-ins. You know, what can I say? Um, you know, it's... Sure, it's not, you know... it. You're hearing everything basically in 2.0 surround sound, basically, two, you know, two speakers. But that doesn't really matter because it's the experience and the fun of just watching it in a big old wooden screen right there in front of you, listening to it on the radio, just like they used to do in the old days. So, what to say about this movie? Well, um, obviously, the movie has so far has done really well. Um, according to Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 97%. Now, I don't really care that, that much about Rotten Tomatoes, personally. I think that's just a waste of time. I know a lot of moviegoers, they tend to, um, that's if they see a review on it, then they think, oh, well, it must be bad or it must be good. We'll go see a movie based on a rating. Yeah. Um, just go and experience it. That's what I say. Um, so, what to say about this movie? Well, quite a lot. Uh, now, there, uh, fair warning, there could be some potential spoilers that happen if you have not seen the movie. Um, go watch it, and then come back and watch this. Um, now, granted, uh, memory is not all that great, but from what I can remember... Um, so far, it's actually not a bad movie. I mean, you know, uh, it's done in, uh, full CG computer animation. Um, you can tell heavily inspired by, uh, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, as far as that, uh, certain style goes, which I think was a really, really clever idea, uh, to do it that way. And... So, now you have the turtles, obviously, uh, but the great thing about this particular version of it is that we've actually seen a version of the turtles we've never seen before. We've actually seen them as teenagers, yeah, which is something that uh, we've never really seen before at all. Um, and also, another great thing about that is that when they are talking, there's a lot of overlapping, which is what, you know, you hear a lot of teenagers basically do. You know, they just talk, everybody's just kind of talking and whatnot. And it's just kind of interesting seeing it from a different perspective. Um, now we have, uh, surprisingly, we actually have uh, some really, really good, surprisingly, uh, uh, you know, A-list, uh, you know, cast for the voice cast. I was not expecting uh, Jackie Chan to play uh, uh, Splinter. I'm like, that's completely different. You know what I mean? Um, so here, who else? Uh, obviously Seth Rogen, who was also one of the writers and came up with the story. He voiced Bebop. Um, and apparently John Cena voiced, uh, Rocksteady, which was kind of surprising. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. But I'm like, okay. Um, then you had Ice Cube as the villain Firefly. Yeah, no Shredder this time. Um, which I think is actually a pretty good improvement because, you know, you can only do so much with Shredder, you know. I mean, obviously, he was the main villain for, you know, the first two live-action movies. As obviously the main villain for basically, well, obviously the comics and pretty much, you know, throughout the old, uh, almost all of the uh, TV versions of the show that's been available out there. Um, you know, but I thought it was kind of a nice change of pace, you know, seeing something kind of different. Animation was great because I could tell that they used real cheap animation styles because uh, in certain frames, you could tell if you're counting, it's the same animation over and over and over again, like it's just drawing with chalk or something like that. So, you know, very uh, kind of interesting animation, but it works, you know, which was a great thing about it. Um, let's see here, who also voiced, uh, oh, and apparently Maya Rudolph, <laughs> out of, out of everybody, she voices, a uh, uh, a villainous type of character or something like that, um, but, you know, I was kind of surprised by that, but, uh, you know, overall, though, um, a pretty, pretty good, you know, movie, you know, having almost an original story, you know, a little bit different take on the Turtles, um, but the one thing that I did love about it is that we actually got to see something that we really haven't seen a whole lot of in any of the movies. 
um, uh, the Turtles actually don't have to go and rescue Raphael. Yeah, that's something that, you know, you saw the first movie, you saw the second movie, the TMNT, the 2007 movie, he kind of does his little, um, you know, his little Batman persona type thing, um, you know, and they have to go after him and, you know, whatnot, but, um, you know, I'm just kind of glad that they didn't have to rescue Raph this time around, because usually that's kind of what ends up happening, but... Uh, I mean, what can I say, though? I mean, it was just such an amazing, amazing movie. Um, I'm definitely going to get that on Blu-ray. Definitely when it comes out. Um, can't wait for the sequel. Um, I'm sure all of you have probably read who the next villain's going to be. Because, obviously, you know, we can't really have Ninja Turtles without that particular villain. And you probably know who that villain is already. Uh, but I, if they ever do, whenever they do bring in that character, I'm wondering where they would go next. Because... I know one thing we've never really seen in any of the movies, uh, besides the 87 series, we've never been to Dimension X. And I would love for them to bring Dimension X into this Mutant Mayhem version of the Turtles, as well as bring in the Hot Rotting Teenagers. Bring back those characters. That would be an awesome idea for the sequel. So, uh, Seth, if you, Seth Rogen, if you ever watch this and you come across it, um, Start thinking of ideas to bring those characters in. Yeah, as well as Krang, too. <laughs> uh, but this time, though, no deep voice for Krang. Please, if Krang does become one of the villains in the, in the next movie, um, please, because no offense, you know, deep, deep guttural Krang from the Michael Bay movies, that doesn't work. Because we all know Krang from, uh, the, from the 87 series, perfect voice, that's all you need. Uh, but overall, you know, very, very good movie, you know, really well animated. Um, I can't wait to watch the behind the scenes features on this. And, um, you know, I mean, what can I say though? I mean, it's, it was just, it was such a really good movie and I was really surprised with it. Oh, the score. Yes. That's one thing I forgot to mention. The score done by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Yeah. Um, I had, I've never heard of the score. I never heard of any of it. Usually I like to you know, listen to it to kind of get an idea of what it sounds like. So as, as it starts up, next thing you know, the bass speakers and the cars just start rattling and going nuts. And I'm like, oh man, just imagine what that would sound like in the theater. Um, you know, they've done loads of great scores, um, including uh, one of my favorites, uh, Book of Eli, um, you know, The Social Network, um, you know, um, um, the uh the go the uh the girl with the dragon tattoo uh remake uh the David Fincher version, um but yeah I mean it, it, overall it's just a really really good movie um now obviously I cannot review Mission Impossible Seven because I had to leave by the time that movie had started because unfortunately I had work today uh, yeah. I'll see Mission Seven at some point um probably you know probably until the Blu Ray comes out probably. Uh, but yeah, but, um, like I said though, if you can ever get a chance to go watch a movie at a drive-in, do it. Please keep those drive-ins going because that's what got through a lot of people through COVID, obviously, because, you know, we had to have a whole spread thing, but keep the, you know, keep the old, sometimes the old is still popular, you know, you know, keep those local independent, you know, companies, you know, around that. Yes. You know, theaters may make you know, movies may make a bunch of money at theater chains and stuff, but don't knock off those, uh, you know, those, you know, the little drive-in theaters, because sometimes they can, uh, you know, if you get the right crowd in, they'll make some decent money. Yeah. So, Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, i definitely give it an easy 9.5 out of 10 shells. Yeah. And so with that, um, you know, stick around for the next review, whatever that is, and... You know, more content coming. And with that, I'll see you later. Cowabunga.